Hi everyone, this is Sherry Bell Raywald, and before we get started with today's Step Up episode, I want to thank our very cool sponsor, Event Espresso. Event Espresso is an event registration and management plugin for WordPress. It will turn your WordPress site into an effective event management tool. So check out Event Espresso at eventespresso.com. Look at the demo, check out the features between the free and premium version, and see which one is right for you. Event Espresso, our wonderful sponsor, thank you so much. And let's get to this episode of Step Up. Hi everyone, this is Sherry Bell Raywell. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Step Up. My guest today is Blend Tech Blenders, a company that went from being nobody online to huge online thanks to its video series that have continued for the last four years. Fans have blown these videos out of the water, making them viral because they can't get enough of Blend Tech's blending up things grinding up things, destroying things like iPads and iPhones in their super strong blend tech blenders. Every episode is based on a single question. Will it blend? That is the question. Join me as I talk to Kels Goodman, the videographer at Blend Tech, to find out what has made these videos go viral. Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Step Up. This is Sherry Bell Raywald and my special guest today is Kels Goodman from Blendtec. And Kels, what little thing did you guys do that has made you so well known across the universe, the galaxy, the world? <laughs> well, we, we went a little crazy and decided to produce some videos that uh, I think shocked a few people uh, on YouTube. We've been doing them for about uh, four years now and mm -hmm. um, uh, we just decided, really honestly, it started with us kind of considering doing an infomercial, and uh, we were gonna we were gonna do an infomercial. Some people had approached us, and and Blendtec's advertising was pretty much zero, mm -hmm. and uh, and so we I was hired on along with George Wright and uh, Ray Hansen, and we were basically were the marketing group. And uh, Ray Hansen was the was the web designer who's no longer with us, but. Um, and then George, uh, who's also no longer with us, he was, uh, he was the marketing director. And, uh, we decided, uh, one day Tom was blending, uh, as part of their test, a two by four and turning it into a, um, you know, sawdust into sawdust. And we, we saw that and thought, wow, that needs to be seen. And at that time, I was very new to YouTube. It was brand new, mm. and uh, and so I I watched other videos, and that was back when the uh, the guy that did the evolution of dance that was about the only real popular thing on there. Okay. And, uh, and so we had uh, we decided to go ahead and uh, produce a show just as a joke, and I wasn't sure how it was going to evolve because we were our brain was thinking, okay, we need to make an infomercial. Um, because that's what the little giant ladder, who's one of our neighbors, they had a very well, you know, they have kind of a similar product, same price. Um, and, and obviously they were spending, you know, lots of money on an infomercial and we weren't really ready to spend money here. Um, Blendtec has never been one to spend a lot of money on advertising. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, and also what uh, television was something that, that Blendtec didn't always believe in, mm -hmm. uh, we were we were one time we had a little spot on uh what was it called the um home one of the shows on the home shopping network and we thought it was going to do something really good and it did nothing and so that was kind of the mentality that that Blendtec, you know had upstairs was that um television advertising doesn't work and uh, and we we felt otherwise but we also needed to some kind of avenue um to show how strong the blenders are because they really are um, they really are what you see on the on the uh, on the videos. Um, they had, uh, you know, they, it was one of those issues where um, uh, the mentality was: if we build it, they will come. Uh, a tenth of the company is actually filled with engineers, and they hold that with pride. Um, but they, but as far as singing and dancing the product, they've never really been very good at it. Okay. And, uh, so we we had to find a way to sing and dance it, but with no money. And uh, and so Tom Dixon, who knew the product because he created the product, 
uh, decided we, we decided to put him in front of the camera. And when you watch the first few episodes of Will It Blend, they're very boring and they're very droll, <laughs> except for what we destroyed. And uh, and so as as each episode and the popularity started to grow, you see that there's more of a uh, there's more of a uh, you know writing to it, and there's actually more thought you know being put into each time we blend we blend something. Um, but when we first started doing it, it was just, we didn't really know what we were going to walk into. It was, it was literally an accident. Uh, George, our marketing director will say otherwise. Um, but I, I know for sure because I filmed them and I edited them together with cheesy sixties game show music, um, and in a, in a cheesy room at the time. In fact, the first 10 or so, uh, Will it blend episodes were just done in a in a boring room, and then when we saw the popularity, we actually had a set built, and mm -hmm. decided to continue the the episodes going that way. Um, but uh, after the first uh, few episodes, our our views started to go into the hundreds of thousands, and then into the millions, and so we were a little sh uh, sh taken back by that, and we were not technically prepared uh, for the popularity that started to come in. Um, you know, we're just a bunch of good old guys who just make blenders and I do the videos and I try to sing and dance. And, you know, how many I sat and thought, how many videos can you make about blenders without getting bored? You know, exactly. so, um, so we went ahead and uh, as we got into blending uh, around probably our 10th or 12th video, we we started to get seen nationally. Um uh, our first video was November 2nd of 2006. Um, by November 22nd, we were on the Today Show. And so that's how fast the, you know, the popularity kicked in. Yeah. Um, and that's all from putting your videos on YouTube? Just YouTube. So, yeah. you know, people will listen to this and go, well, I put videos on YouTube and nothing happens to mine and mine are kind of cool. So was there... Was there a way that you drove that traffic on YouTube or was it, did you have enough fan base already or enough emails and you, and you emailed out and said, go look at this video? How did you help that traffic build? Well, what, well the other thing we did is we did create a website called willitblend.com. We did, we did do that. And so we did try to send people to that website. And, and, and because I'm not, I didn't do the web part of it, I, I didn't keep track of everything. And I don't think any of us kept track for the first while because we didn't know how long this was going to go. Um, and then after a while, we decided to start keeping track. But um, we, we, you know, uh, Ray Hansen, who is the web guy, he had his ways that I don't totally know, know but he had ways of being able to um, – to go on to like dig and things like that and just you know, and post the videos and, and stick it in other places where it was relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of our first things was blending an iPod. Uh, that was probably number 17 in there. And the iPod, blending the iPod was like, uh, um, was probably what really launched us because then all of the, the geeks who would, who had iPods were also online and watching this stuff. And so we could find little avenues that related to what we blended by sticking those videos on there. Okay. And, uh, and so, so we would always find that we would blend Barbies and we would find a way for, <laughs> you know, we blended Barbie and Ken. And so we tried, you know, and the joke was, was that they were breaking up. And so <laughs> we were helping the breakup and, uh, or we blended, uh, you know, Thanksgiving dinner. And so that was something that would, uh, you know, uh, appear somewhere related to Thanksgiving. Uh, but for the most part, YouTube was it. And, uh, and YouTube was where people would see us. And as, as long as we came out with a new episode, people were still watching and, and the, the numbers were still growing. And, um, we, like I said, we ended up on the today show, um, and that launched us. And then when we blended the iPod that launched us even more. And then when we, we, uh, one of the tricks we did was we decided to sell the iPod, uh, the blended iPod on um, eBay, and uh, and when we did that, the news came, and and you know we we turned it into a, a charity situation where we gave the money, whatever we made off that sale to charity, uh -huh. which was nearly a thousand dollars. So we sold the the blended, and then we gave them the whoever bought it, we gave them a blender as well. So there was a there was obviously they weren't just getting you know crap you know blended. So right. So I know you're not the marketing guy, but 
from what you've learned from watching the marketing side of this, how are you pairing, like every time you shoot out a video, besides YouTube and besides your Blendtec um, site, do you know what marketing efforts are going along with that now? Uh, well, usually what we try to do now is whenever we do, and I, and I am getting more involved in the marketing I, because I am the remaining person that's, that's, that's around since Will It Blend started, I, I am having to kind of force myself to get more into the marketing side, which is good. And our marketing group has actually grown quite a bit. You know, we're about 10 people strong now. Okay. And, uh, but we do, every time we do a Will It Blend, we make sure that we think it out and that there is some kind of connection that's made uh, to either whatever's popular or to uh, maybe a giveaway that we might give. Uh, we understand that our views are probably thinning out a little bit where we still we still get a lot of views uh, but you know they may not be the massive views all, every time and that's okay um, I'd say that one of the other things is, uh, is is that we're constant we constantly are coming out with something we may have a month or so where we we're kind of dead space but then we'll we'll come out with something new uh, like we have a new one right now where there's a phone I can't remember the name of the phone but it's like this indestructible phone. Uh, and somebody came up to Tom Dixon recently and said, Hey, would you try to blend this? And they, you know, they took the phone and they, you know, tried to burn it and do all these things to it. And so we'll blend it, you know, and, and, uh, and that'll be, that'll probably be our next will of blend because that phone is supposedly indestructible. Um, so we always have some kind of reason to now produce these. And we're even at a point where people will hire us to uh, to blend their products because oh that's cool you're blending it, uh, or there's a concept uh, you know we did a one for Nike where where Nike was using a was coming out with a new shoe that had uh, two different types of older technology put together and so obviously they wanted us to blend two shoes together, and that's not easy and and you know it's we can't totally blend shoes but. But we can blend a lot of parts of the shoes, and that's what we did. And, and out came a new shoe, and voila, that okay. was advertising for Nike. So. And then do, do, do those partners use the video in any way that they want? Yep. Yeah, they pretty much own it. And, uh, and, if, and if it's cool enough for us, we'll stick it on our own channel, which is actually a sacred channel. We call it the sacred channel because, you know, we have we got about 350,000 subscribers uh, on 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 Will It Blends, uh, it's actually just called Blend Tech, but it's it's the Will It Blend channel, and we will only put things on there that we feel like our fans will want to watch. Otherwise, we will hand the video to them and let them put it on whatever channel they want to, and they can use the name Will It Blend. They can, uh, you know, use the image, and uh, it's kind of like just having a celebrity come and, you know, endorse your product for you, basically. Mm -hmm. That's really what it is. So. Okay, so how many videos are on YouTube then right now? Uh, there's about, there's over 100. It's probably about 110 maybe by now that are on our YouTube. We've probably produced 130, uh, maybe 140, something like that. We've done a lot of side videos that that aren't on our normal YouTube channel. And and I actually, we have a, another channel that we created called Friends of Blendtec that we will put uh, videos that we just don't think will make it on the main site okay. uh, and that we'll be putting on there. So, Okay, so why do people subscribe to the Sacred Channel? What are they getting besides the best of the videos? What is the, like how are you using that as a traffic builder and a marketing tool? Well, we, we usually can guarantee that when we produce a Will It Blend that you'll at least get about, maybe about a half million hits. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's, yeah, that's that's pretty... And to me, that's like that's an okay video now. I mean, we're we're kind of at a point where if we can hit a million, then we feel like we've done pretty good. And uh, right now, our highest video has hit ten million. But yeah, the main the main reason is if it's something that's cool and fits, uh, and it's got to it's got to have a certain coolness factor because our audience is a young audience. I mean, they're they're they are all over the board, but the majority of them are eighteen. Uh, to 24, some are little kids, younger kids, and they just want to see something destroyed. <laughs> and, uh, and we have a we have a way to be able to read uh, when you know YouTube has come out with this method of being able to tell when the viewer has watched it and when they've turned it off. And it's always right after the blend is over. The majority of our viewers are have turned. Oh, okay, I've seen it destroyed. Okay, click off to the next video. Okay. And and whatever end gag we put on there. Most of them won't even see the end gag. Okay. 
you know, or the website to go to or whatever. And so, so they will only see, um, you know, the, the blend and that's what they, that's what they want to go for. So if it's a cool blend then we will, you know, we'll go with it. And, uh, and occasionally we'll do some comedy stuff. One of my favorite Willet blends was with Ford, uh, where, where Tom went for a drive and he was blending in the back of a, of a Ford. <laughs> I forgot what Fiesta, the Fiesta 2011. And, uh, and, and they were doing a, uh, a viral campaign where a guy was driving it around. And so he had to keep track of his daily run with a free Ford Fiesta that he got. And one of his, one of his travels was to blend tech. And so they hired us actually to, uh, to produce a video. And we just, we kind of, we went stupid, silly, goofy with that one. And sometimes those are the fun ones. I, I enjoy doing those. Okay. So, you know, they always say, your videos or your branding, whatever you put out there, should be really representative of who you are as a company. So you guys are really that goofy? Well, not really. It's, it's you know, the owners of the company, bless their heart, I mean, they're, they're good, fairly, you know, conservative family people that just kind of, you know, they're, they care about family. And, and, and when we came along, me and George and Ray, see, me and Ray – had the synergy while he was here he's been gone for about a year now but when when ray and i were here we always had the silly goofiness that that you can't write yeah you almost just have to do it and then if it's funny then because ray and i have actually we have a separate channel where ray and i do stupid stuff it has nothing to do with will it blend <laughs> but you know that we're the guys that make will it blend you know it's kind of a behind the scenes will it blend channel and so when we're writing this stuff we just you know you just can't really write it because it's just Hey, you you try to, but then there's you know you got to at least have a framework so you can go to the the guys upstairs and say hey we're going to blend this does that sound cool and they're like yeah okay that's great and then we'll blend it and and it'll, if we've done it right it's funnier than how we wrote it because something new came up at the moment while we were shooting it and um, and so and so sometimes it's very hard to redo. Uh, when you when you do those kinds of things, yeah, it's there's a synergy that you have to live with uh, to make it happen, and sometimes you can't sell it. Um, I've been trying to blend Justin Bieber for, <laughs> and, and and we just can't seem to get it right for some reason, you know, and and just because it's, it's getting more and more to the point to where the guys upstairs want a written method of how to do it, and I'm like, sometimes yeah. you just. You know, it's not going to be automatic. It's not going to be written on paper. It's going to be something that's going to come up stupid and silly. And, you know, so it's it's not easy doing these sometimes. But, hmm. you know. Well, that's interesting, the whole how do you sell the concept to the, the people that are sitting in the big chairs upstairs? Uh, how do you? How do we sell them? Well, we, we kind of had gotten to a point to where they pretty much have let us do whatever. Um and for a number of years, we were just pumping out whatever will it blend, you know, if we wanted to blend um, the latest video game, because those are the guys who are watching the show. So when, uh, what was the big one that came out? Um, well, Guitar Hero, we blended Guitar Hero when that was brand new, and that had to be done. Uh, and we blended, uh, you know, what was the other video game? Um, I can't remember them all. <laughs> my son, my son. <laughs> No, but uh, but they but whatever the hottest you know some of the biggest hottest ones that had come out we would blend them and uh, and and it's just boring blending a disc because it's like yeah you can bore you can blend a disc that's easy but it was just the concept of the game you know is what what kids would go and watch um, and then and then uh, we you know we've had a few misses where we blended uh, um, Old Spice, we did an Old Spice, you know, but it was way long after the Old Spice gag was over. And so we, we did it anyway just because I wanted to do it. And our views weren't very big on it, but I'm glad we did it. It was one of those, we just kind of had to do it because it was Old Spice. And uh, and so we had the guy who does the BYU one, um, and they they got, you know, a lot of views and, and a lot of accolades for, for their video. Yeah, so we that was a good video. Yeah. And, and we did that and it was fun it was technically fun to do too it was technically a little challenging and you know we actually had to build a set and be creative and which is kind of my background as i like i i have a motion picture background and so uh you know doing will it blend is is becoming the same i can do it you know with my eyes closed now but uh but it's fun for those that's when it's new to them 
So, so how do you know when it's time to stop? When you're no longer getting those 500,000 hits or? Yeah, when it's, it's, and one thing that, you know, I talked, I, I counseled a few other people on some web series that they're doing. And one of the things I told them is, is, is to just stay steady. And, uh, and, and we try to find little landmarks of, you know, like we, for example, we know a new iPhone is going to be coming out this summer. We understand an iPhone 5 is coming out. So we know that that's a landmark that we're going to hit. And so we try to maybe do little ones that we know aren't going to be very big between now and then. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, my, I, I will estimate that the new iPhone 5 will probably get maybe a million views on that one. Not a lot, but we'll probably get maybe up to a million and and I think the whole key to people doing web series or things like that is to stay steady and to not worry whether one video gets fewer views than another. It's just to stay constant. It's like t- you know when you see we see TV shows, you know The Simpsons for example, very long running show, but they've had their ups and downs. But then when they hit a landmark like they you know they hit ten years, it's like whoa, we've been around for ten years, and then their viewership starts to go up again. And then when they hit 20 years, oh my gosh, it's 20 years. Mm-hmm. Their viewership's going up again. They, you know, and so they've probably had years where they had slow, slow moments, and people kind of got bored and quit watching them. And um, you know, but they would, you know, they would eventually do do pretty well mm-hmm. on a long on a long term basis. And that's that's what will sell is if you if you stay steady uh, and just keep going with what you're doing. Um, you, you'll have, you'll have, you, you'll be more of something rather than your 15 minutes of fame. You'll have an hour and a half of fame. Okay, but so, there is there an end point for the videos, and you're going to move on to something else? Yes, actually, there, there is. We, we, uh, I'll be honest. There have been moments in which I hated Will It Blend, <laughs> and, uh, and then moments in which I'm like, oh, you know what? We did all right. You know, we've done yeah. pretty good. But right now, I think the Blendtec's focus is actually going to be shifting. Uh, more into um, the use of the blender, the selling of the actual blender, because that's really our goal. Will it blend? Will continue, but uh, but what will, it will be sparingly, and uh, and we will have. We, we're actually right now working on a pilot uh, with the Green Smoothie Girl, and uh, the Green Smoothie Girl uh, has also has a following that's pretty decent, and is also a big fan of the Blendtec blender. And I've done some work with her on a personal basis. If you, when you watch her videos, I produced all her videos. Okay. At, um, and so now we're actually talking about doing a pilot of a, of a show, whether it be for television or for the Internet, uh, where we will go in and help change people's lives through better he- eating. And it'll be something that will be sponsored by Blendtec. And so it'll be kind of the first of its kind. And we've, already, we've actually already picked a handful of people to be in, in the pilot. It's kind of a reality type show, uh, where where we will help them with their diets, but then they'll have to use the Blendtec blender and everywhere they go. So we're going to start doing kind of more things like that, mm-hmm. uh, where we where we uh, dive more into the reality of it. But we'll always touch. Will it blend? Um, we'll also probably are going to be work. We are on tap on working on an infomercial, full on infomercial this time. Again, touching in uh, will it blend as you know. Sort of the theme would be, you know, that guy that sticks all those crazy things in a blender. Now you can have that in your home kind of mentality. Okay. So that would be that would be the theme of it. So for you, um, you think that video is definitely it, okay. Let me just ask you instead of suggesting. Do you think video is the most effective marketing tool for a small business right now? If they have a product to sell, not some how okay. Let me rephrase this. If I'm a small business and I hear all this hype about video, video, I need to be on YouTube, and I'm a service, perhaps maybe instead of a product. What would the tips that you would give me to create a video? And and my wildest dream is to have it go viral, but you know that's so you know don't even go there. But just how <laughs> is video in your mind an effective marketing tool for small business? Well, um, really, the the number one thing right now for a small business is really the word of mouth. Um, but to get that word of mouth, you got to have a tool. And obviously, I think video, video, in my opinion, video may not be necessarily right for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a I have a brother in law down in Vegas who um, who's got a uh, um, he's got a mortgage company. And he produced a video and put it on YouTube, and it's 
I have to shake my head. I mean, he's he's done a fine job with what he had, but he he looks like Michael Scott going all through his office trying to get everybody excited, you know, about mortgages, and and so it's it's kind of, it's it's a hard thing to sell on a video, it, it, you know. And so he's asked me actually to go down there, so I'm going down there in a few weeks to see if I can't help him to produce something for his mortgage company. And uh, but I'm promising him right now that I can't, you know, you're not going to get Will It Blend by any means because. You know, you don't have anything. You know, we destroy things in Willow Blend, and people, and it, and it attracts people <laughs> you know, for some reason. But it, there's when you produce a video, there has to be. If you're a nobody, if you don't have a name, and you're doing it all out of your home or whatever, um, you know, there's a few technical things that you want to make sure you do. Obviously, um, you know, technically, you want to make sure your camera's on a tripod and in focus. And you got good audio, invest in a microphone that works and don't try to do it, you know, homegrown, uh, you know, type thing um, unless it fits what you're doing. But really, you almost have to find something that will shock people. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's sad that you have to do that, but you almost have to have to do something that will uh, shock someone. Um, I saw a video the other day um, of... of um, and it's it's kind of a negative situation, but uh, it, they were they were guys dressed up and it was almost kind of uh, reminiscent of um, you know like like during the Iraq War that you know you have these uh, you know certain people who are in extreme groups who are beheading people, and 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 I saw one the other day where these extreme people were beheading Ronald McDonald uh, mm -hmm. to get their point across of of you know Ronald McDonald and and their food. And uh, and so they so they dressed, you know, they put a mask on and, and they sat there and spoke in another language. And and uh, they had Ronald McDonald with a bag over his head and and uh, and they beheaded him. Mm -hmm. And and obviously they were getting a point across with the shock video. We didn't know who they were. We didn't really know what they were. We knew they, they were some other language and they, they were some threat. But once you saw Ronald McDonald there with a bag over his head, that shocked everyone. Mm -hmm. And so obviously that video is going to get a lot of views just for that reason mm -hmm. then from that they will find out who they are and uh, and more about them and and it's too bad that that's that's what some people like mm -hmm. but uh but but that's that's sometimes what you see you're going to have to do something funny you're going to have to do something shocking you're going to have to do something uh you know just think of all the videos and ask yourself the question what made you watch that video what was it that made you watch david coming out of the dentist and 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 sitting there and getting millions of views of him yeah. just sitting there, you know, <laughs> girl, you know, and it's it really does. It's it. What made you watch that? And 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 so you go do what made you watch it. And and that's what you that's what you're going to have to do, in order to get people to to uh, to to get to see you. Mm -hmm. You know, they need to be able to see you in some fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going to get them to do that? And uh, and so that would be. My main my uh, my main suggestion to those who have a business, uh, and 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 it's hard because a lot of businesses they don't sell fluff. They may be great people, mm -hmm. but they don't have anything that might totally you know how do you how do you sing and dance mortgages? I mean that's a tough thing to do uh, unless you've got some kind of fun way, and and you might be able to do it. Well, but, it's Vegas, uh, right? It's Vegas, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I mean it's. Uh, I'm sure that I'm sure with with current times, something that everybody's feeling, there could be a way to uh, to be able to sing and dance the mortgages that this that my brother-in-law might do, and we'll find out. You know, we'll play with it and see what happens. So it's either go that route or hire somebody who's sensational or popular, like Lady Gaga or yeah. Seth Godin or something yeah. like that. What Seth did, the man. Yeah. I what love did Seth. you guys do when you when you <laughs> did a um, promotional with him? What did you guys actually do? Well, Seth, uh, Seth had um, his book called uh, Meatball Sunday, and so we went to his house and, and, and hung out with him. He was an awesome guy, and, he, uh, uh, and we blended a meatball Sunday. That's basically what we did. Okay. And, uh, and so we got him a blender, and, uh, and we went to his home, and, and I filmed it, and uh, we, just, we just had a good time. And we were in New York already, and so on, uh, at a YouTube convention that we were there for and so we went ahead and me and George went to his house and blended the meatball Sunday and then I had a I tried to get him to endorse me to be in this great filmmaker you know and 
And so he sort of did it. So I've got a video of him saying that I'm this great filmmaker. But anyway, I'm sure he was just goofing around. Oh, he's a great guy. I really, he really like is. Him. Yeah. So. All right. So let's just lay it out for people. Let's say if you have um, sort of a system then for that you would suggest that someone yep. use for creating a video, for getting it out there, getting a little publicity for it, and then building on that, what would your steps be? Well, the first thing I would do is I would set up your social media. I would get your Facebook. I would get, uh, um, I would get your Twitter. I would get um, YouTube. I get the basic essentials of of your business, and then and then find a similar image that goes through all of them, so that when you click on it, you know exactly when you see the swirl that it's it's you know will it blend or whatever. Right. So you've got you've got to get your brand all established, get all those. Um, social media network set up and be ready to pay a lot of attention to them um, and then once you do that then produce a video um, whether it be one or whether it be a series all depends on your product um, if you've got uh, if you have um, ongoing say testimonials from people maybe it might be fun to to you know people who've used your product or used your service uh, get each of them to give a testimonial. I'm just throwing these ideas out. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, whatever your series might be. But the thing is, if you do one video and uh, and it's not shocking, you're going to have to do a series of them and stay steady with that series, okay. whether it be once a week, whether it be once a month. And then, and then just start putting them out. And don't be afraid that the views may not be very high right off the bat. It's okay. Um, and, and, just, and, and once you put one out, Put them on Facebook, put them on Twitter, uh, you know, obviously YouTube uh, as the main mechanism, and then link it to your own website and let it all be familiar, and and just keep it going. Be be good with your name. Act as if you are uh, your own television show, and and you've got your own cast, and you've got your, you know, make it all look familiar. The like, let's say you're online and you watch the faces of uh, the latest Office episode. I'm a fan of the Office. And so if you see the latest Office episode you, um, or, or you see an ad for it, you know immediately that that's the Office. If you see a picture of Michael Scott, you know exactly what that's going to be. So what you've got to do is take your video and you've got to produce familiar familiarity. Gosh, I'm not getting that word out right. Anyway, <laughs> be familiar because I just ate these almonds. Uh, something uh, familiar with, uh, with your, your series. Whether it be a person in your office that has a really good, um, you know, that has really good personality that could be on camera, or whether it be the shocking thing that you do, like in our case, it's a blender. When you see the blender and you see a rake handle go in it, that's usually our symbol of that's us, and a lot of people know who that is. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, what you want to do is is not be afraid that when you produce the first video that there's not a lot of views, that it's it's a bomb. Don't do that right away. Wait. You got to be steady with what you do in your series, and it's got to be a series that you can afford to do uh, on an ongoing basis. Even if it's just a matter of picking up your own camera and a few lights and a microphone and just being able to talk to people, um, you know. So it really depends. Obviously, people like shock, uh, but uh, if that's not immediate, they will take a, a slow, steady um, series of videos that apply to your product or your service. And get it all established as if people are sitting back and relaxing and watching TV because people don't all watch something that's long and drawn out and, and takes too long. And that's the other ticket is two minutes max. I mean, uh, two to three minutes max. So, so keep it short. Uh, our attention spans are small. And, uh, and just make them all match. Make them all look good all throughout all your social media. Okay. And, and then obviously find ways to... Uh, link it to other people, to other groups. Um, always do some kind of partnership with somebody else uh, because that will always double your size. Uh, don't be afraid to do it. Don't ever be afraid to partner with, with another group. And, uh, and especially somebody else that might have a pretty decent YouTube presence, kind of like what we've done for other people. And um, do you have to worry about, you know, like – we all start out rough, you know, this is only like my fifth episode of this show and there are things that every time I watch it, I'm like, oh, I stopped doing that. But <laughs> do you, you know, are the very first Blendtec videos still out there or are you so embarrassed about them that you've t taken them off? Do people need to worry about cleaning up after themselves or do they just let it, let it out, hang out there? 
Yeah, you you want uh, you want a grand you want a grand history to be seen. I I have our first few videos, like I said earlier, they, they when you watch them, they're very droll and boring. But you know what? They're part of history. They're part of it. They're not my best videos, but uh, they were fun making and uh, and they uh, they're out there and they they add to the big list, the big numbers that we have on YouTube because. You also want to maybe find a way to do analytics for what you do. Uh, you know, work with YouTube on finding out. Uh, there are ways for people to find out on YouTube when somebody has watched your video, when they've turned it off, or when they, you know, when they were excited. You know, and so there, are, they've learned to find out those analytics. Facebook, same thing. I mean, I have a movie that I that I did. Uh, that's coming out in September, and and Facebook right now is my number one way of finding out where the movie's going to open. Um, is is by using uh, Facebook because now I know where my my fans are. And ironically, what I didn't know is my biggest fans are in the Philippines, and I I don't know how to release a movie in the Philippines, so I don't know what we're going to do with that. But uh, but at least I know that they're there. And uh, my next biggest is Salt Lake, and then Dallas and Los Angeles. So I mean it's you know, you find out who likes you and who doesn't like you by using these methods. Hmm. Uh, learn every analytic that you can off of Facebook and Twitter and, and YouTube. Hmm. Go ahead and give us a plug for your movie. Go ahead. Okay. My movie's <laughs> it's called The Last Eagle Scout, and, uh, and I've been working on it for several years. It's actually, what's funny is it is about scouting, but it's also kind of a, a political movie. It's got a little bit of politics in it. Some people may not like it, but... It's about how uh, political correctness tries to destroy the Boy Scouts, and uh, and thus uh, you know I've already gotten hate mail from just watching the preview, uh, but you know it's kind of fun to rile people up, and I don't really have a side. I I my main thing is I just love peace and prosperity, and that's all I love. I just you know hmm. I'm I'm an ever changing person right now, and I think I really think I think highly of people who who are always looking and wondering and wanting to know and and learn. And and to change their views on things, mine have definitely changed over the years. Uh, but uh, the last Eagle Scout is uh, basically in the film. There's a a murder that happens on a scout camp, and when that happens, then uh, then the government shuts down the Boy Scouts, and the popularity uh, through media and stuff like that destroy try to destroy the Scouts. And there's so much. Uh, it's all really about how media can help destroy people uh, in overnight. And uh, and so that's really what the story is all about. Uh, it'll be out in September, and uh, and we'll be in a handful of theaters. And you and we do have a uh, Facebook page right now, and you can watch the preview as well. So okay, and your Facebook page is what? Uh, the Last Eagle Scout. Okay, great. Uh, it's just yeah, just type in the Last Eagle Scout, and you can find it. Okay, so, great. So uh, let's wrap this up. Uh, first, tell me what is your favorite Blendtec episode my favorite uh, will it blend is probably the glow sticks yeah me too uh, i loved seeing it uh seeing it do it in the dark it was a little different mm -hmm. you know it was different but yeah it was still the good old-fashioned will it blend yeah i think that's tom's favorite too isn't it yeah, yeah. i think it is too yeah, yeah. all right but, so give us your assignment then okay the assignment for you guys is uh, what you need to do is that whatever your product or service is i think it's important for you to um to, to produce a video. I think you've got you to start by producing something, even if it's the trashiest trash, and, uh, and, and find a way to technically make it as best as you can. Make the audio as good as you can. You know, the mic has got to be close to you, you know, whether it be here or whether it be here, and, uh, and keep it in focus and put it on a tripod if that's, you know, purpose of the show. Or if you are hand-holding it, just be very steady. Uh, and, and beyond that technical you know, just the sky's the limit. You know, find a really creative buddy that you might know and give them a chance to to produce something and and see what happens and see what works because you just you just never know. Get some creative student or something. They'll be very happy to get into the advertising world by making you something. So so do it that way. That's a great point. Yeah. Your one tip then to leave us with is what has been the staying power of Blendtec? Why are people still watching four years later the same basic theme of we're going to grind something up? I think it's because there's always new people going to it. Oh. There are still enough people uh, in the world that have not heard of it. Japan has kind of picked up on us recently. We've been uh, approached by a new Japanese TV reality TV show. Hmm. Uh, 
I don't oh, totally understand it, but uh, they were here for the last few days, and it was all about hard things meeting each other. You know, like the hardest food uh, with the strongest blender. That was what they wanted to see. So they they didn't tell us what they wanted to blend, but they set it up by filming Tom and all this kind of stuff. But uh, you know, Japan, and, and then all of a sudden there were other shows from Japan that wanted pieces of will it blend in their tv show and so somehow we're getting this weird new following in japan hmm. and uh so we'll just continue to do it for whoever's new and and it's just because it's new and um people it's it's new to some people it might be old and boring to others but uh after a while like me i went through a phase of loving it mm -hmm. hating it going hey that's not so bad you know kind of the leonard nimoy you know thing i mean he went through that with spock and so you just you just never know, and if you stay the course, uh, you know you'll actually have a decent series that'll that'll be in you know forever. We may end this year, you know this November will be our fifth will be the end of our fifth year, and we may call it good right there. So, hmm. alrighty, well we're gonna keep watching until you guys are done, and then we'll we we'll go on to Green Smoothie Girl, I guess. So, thank you so much. It was You're fun. welcome. Thank you for watching, everyone, and use video. Step up in your business, see where it takes you. Who knows, you could be the next Will It Blend. See you guys, thank you.